this video I'm going to show you the simple enclosure for this tiny little CPAP blower. This little sample was provided to me at the RepRep Festival by the Fabrico crew. I very much appreciate that. It's a little smaller than my previous CPAP blower, but it's spec-wise can output the same airflow basically as my older one. So here's the concept. I have this blower which I want to enclose and uh, soundproof a little bit. Uh, so um, I'm going to pack everything inside. The idea behind this part here, the controller, is that I wanted to have some passive air cooling on my air intake so that these three MOSFETs and the PC control board can get cooled. So my air intake actually has dual purpose. I simply put a bead of hot glue around the part and just set the PC board in. It holds really nicely. And if I ever need to take it off, uh, basically a little bit of isopropyl alcohol can release this bond really easily without leaving any damage. So I like that very much. So here is my concept. I'm going to plug in the motor. The blower probably like that I don't know exactly we'll see and then i have the slider frame that uh, screws on but before i do i wanted to measure i have two screws one is a, the better option the correct one the diameter is about 2.3 millimeters and the length is about 7.6 millimeters this screw is a little too large for this job so the first one is the better option but uh, i have three mounting points on this frame and i'm going to basically use one as my main screw and the other screw is a little too long i suppose i can trim it a little bit to make sure that i get a good connection and I'll just put the larger screw in i just can't tighten it all the way Probably should have taken it to the bench grinder and just ground it down. But you can see it holds well enough with one screw and one to prevent rotation. So then I have printed this enclosure that I already had a, a YouTube short showing this off. Um, I'll post the STL and maybe even the step file for this but uh, the idea is really simple that this whole assembly goes in like so and the next part is to connect i put a provision for a potentiometer just in case i had to use it i'm going to leave this disconnected and uh, what we'll do is connect power and uh, signal I'll show you the signal wires, how that goes through. But first it, it routes through here. Then connect the power, 24 volts directly to the control board. And the signal wires, which is pin number th uh, two and three. If you're counting from the top, they are marked VSR and GND. So ground and voltage signal so let's see how this all fits together one thing that you may be asking dimitri what are you doing with the with the soundproofing didn't you have an idea for for that so it looks like i just made a little too tight here i do want to maybe add a little bit of clearance wires are a little thicker than I thought so when I made that notch here I only count accounted for this thickness of the wires let me just trim this a little bit more probably don't need to show this on camera all right so just a little bit more room for the wires it'll clear slide on and then it'll snap in place but first let's add 
the soundproofing material. So what I have here is a uh, play sand. And I'm gonna just fill this up with sand, keeping it, making sure I keep it out of my keyboard and out of the air intake. Mm, great. So hopefully it'll blow this out. I may need to power this on first. Ugh. Kids don't do this at home. I guess this is point of no return. I'm gonna fill this up anyways. Unfortunately, I didn't really dry this thoroughly. All right, this is maybe a little simpler. Let's see. The idea behind this is that the heavier the object is, the better soundproofing it uh, has. So let's see what happens. If I have to take this apart, I'm just going to dump it outside in the sandbox. So the kids aren't going to mind this. I really should have dried the sand first, but I don't think it's going to cause any shorts. I hope it doesn't. We'll see. We'll see if I end up doing something really, really stupid. It already feels really nice and heavy. So, and I just sealed off the. So we're just spoon feeding this enclosure. I've had this sand out here for about a week on my uh, workbench here, and it. It didn't really dry much. But I'm curious to see, to hear what it sounds like. Everything is in place where it should be. a lot simpler with dry sand to fill but it is what it is I don't have to go all the way to the top and uh, we're gonna see what happens I do have a baseline on the previous assembly what it sounds like I didn't record DB values but it's just going to be subjective a little bit. Uh, let's see. I did get some sand into my loop here, so hopefully it's going to be okay. All right. That's probably enough. So, enough of that feels nice and heavy. Uh, you can see this is a 0.4 millimeter uh, extrusion. It's a lot weaker. What what you're looking at on screen here, it's um, it's a 0.7 millimeter enclosure. So let's see. Let's try to snap this together. 
and uh, if it does snap together it may be a one-time deal where <laughs> it'll be really hard to pop it open in the future so the snaps they feel really nice and make sure it uh, make sure it fits correctly here before I apply too much pressure and the snaps are solid feels like a brick uh, let me take the sand off before I do anything else this is horrible so amateur you never thought you'd have sand on your 3d printer workbench all right let's uh let's see I, i'm gonna just dump this upside down for a second see if any sand comes out of my air okay so let's power this on and obviously the air will air hose will connect like so so back to my computer let's power on the printer that's my air intake so the printer is on starting off the firmware oh and it switches off okay so my fan is off completely right now and then i'm going to go to 20 percent so that's a minimum and let's uh, jump to max in reality I never run it more than about 60% for the most part in the 40% range so this is very nice and quiet and then the fact that I can move this put it out of the way now I can't say for sure if the sand made it any quieter the air intake is probably the loudest portion of this but uh, let me put it up above the printer on the shelf and see how it behaves there and this is 20% 26% 20% I can't hear it over the hum of the power supply and the control board fan speaking of power supply fan this blower is large enough to provide cooling for everything kind of like central home HVAC systems where you have a blower that can take care of everything the whole house supply cool or hot air to any area of the house so here i can cool potentially the extruder um, well i am cooling the extruders uh, but it could also cool the stepper motors xy and it could also cool the power supply and the uh, motherboards the stepper drivers so i think this has a huge potential where one blower replaces all your little annoying fans and then it doesn't matter if you get more air too much isn't there is no such thing as too much cooling so at min it'll be just enough and at max everything will be super happy and super cold i like it i like how it sounds right now i can feel let me take the camera off 
for a spin here. So I can feel the air coming up on the extruders. I can feel the air here and coming off the back of each one of my stabbers. So there is residual air coming through the hot end through the hot end, through the extruder and up into the so it's exhaust straight up through this so the motors are really nice and cold and uh, that you can't really hear I mean I keep my camera on it and just max out the sound max out the volume Three. 62, 37, 22, and 0. This is 25%. I like that. And that, that heavy plastic brick now, filled with sand, it's got some stability to, uh, to it. There, it seems like a decent place for it. Not too far from the printer, easy to service, easy to reach. So I'm pleased with that.